Hey everybody, it's been a minute, but uh, we're back at the Hero Homestead. It's springtime, so time to start doing some work on some things, which first and foremost is tractor maintenance. Uh, RK24 tractor, got it last year, you all know. Um, at 50 hours, they suggest, well, not really suggest, if you wanna keep your warranty, you do it. Uh, the maintenance, so it's mostly the transaxle or trans hydraulic fluid, all that sort of stuff, the filters for that change your oil check everything else they've got a long list on theirs but the required things are front axle uh, fluid needs checked and changed trans hydraulic fluid for all your implements and things like that needs drained uh, refilled with new and then the two filters for it need checked and changed um, other than that it, and then normal oil change which is not really much different than a car so uh, yeah I'll go through the little beginning part here. So first thing first is get your tractor set up and comfortable, which means uh, easiest way to do it, get it off the ground, is get it to where you're going to work on it. And then uh, the good thing about this, since I have the backhoe on the back, is uh, it picks itself right up. So you uh, use the feet, lift it up off the ground, same thing, and use the front loader, lift the whole thing where all four wheels are free from the ground. Uh, got some just regular car jack stands back there kind of hard it doesn't have a normal frame like a car would to find it but you know this is as hardened steel there so you can put your jack stands there and then i just grabbed some cinder blocks for the front some people use like little mini you know lift ramps like when they change the oil but this will work just fine once you get it on there get it steady uh get everything down so the pressure is off your hydraulic lines and then you can get to work of course you know you want to let it cool down because no one likes to work on hot engines and vehicles so Anywho, here we go. Okay, guys, so this would be the right side, passenger side, whatever you want to call it, right side, rear tire, axle of the tractor. Uh, you take that off, it's a 19 millimeter socket that does it. Um, don't be surprised, they're not lug nuts like a car. It's a bolt that goes through the rim of the tire into the axle. Um, I'm using an, an air wrench like that to do that. I scared me a little bit i wasn't expecting that and you got to be careful because that can strip out your bolts or rip them and break them um, with something like this so be careful might be better to use um if you have a smaller four-way like from a car or something like that but just something to be mindful of uh so yeah once you get that off just roll it out of the way it won't drop it kind of rests on the axle it's got a little uh lip here um so you pop the tire off just set it off the side uh first step is this right here uh you can't really see it here we go this right here is one of your drain bolts uh, for your hydraulic system. Uh, so you'll take that off, it'll drain, and you get that out there. Keep in mind, there is five gallons of hydraulic fluid in there if that thing's full. That's a lot, not a normal drain pan. Uh, so you can just go to the store, pick up one of these. This was like 17 bucks, a tractor supply, or you know they got them in RK. I just happened to remember on my way home that I needed it, so I grabbed it. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna start draining. There is another one on the other side and uh, Kind of the same location. I'm not sure if it's the same size, but again you want to use uh, like an open face wrench on that to do that that way you don't break it off Because that would be bad and yeah, I do believe that is also the cap for uh, your trans hydraulic one of your filters uh, Be gentle with it. It's when it's just here at the beginning at the 50 hours, a lot of people are saying, you know, you take it out, it'll look clean. If it is, just kind of take some diesel fuel to it, clean it, make sure there's no particulates there, uh, blow it off some air, throw it back in, it's good to go. If you break that off, that is one of the mo that is actually the most expensive part to this whole process. Uh, it's 50 bucks for that one little filter there, so try your best not to break it. Nope. Okay. Good deal. Now, I don't know if that's a... Oh, that's the other thing. Like I just did. Don't lose the gasket off of this thing. Because that would be a pain. Uh, yeah, so. See, I got a lot of debris right there. I'll have to clean all that up, which we'll do. But uh, I do know that mine not, might not be like an exact barometer of how much pressure is going to be on there. Uh, I take my backhoe off the back every spring because we do gardening and, and whatnot. So we put our uh, four foot tiller on there. And the last time I did that, oh, that's splashing, shoot. Um, the last time I did that, uh, I lost a lot of hydraulic fluid because I did the, uh, the process out of order a little bit. So I lost a lot of fluid when I was trying to hook everything back up. But give it a few minutes. Like I said, that's five gallons. So 
it's going to take a little bit to drain out of there. All right, children. So like I said, this is your uh, trans hydraulic filter and it's mostly clean except you can tell, see right there, all that build up and gunk. That's what it's, it's doing its job, obviously. So you want to clean it off nice as you can, you know, get a nice, you know, little rag or something and gently dust it away. Get it, be careful. You don't want to get this crap in your fingers because it's some just soot and gunk and all that, but some of it is also little shards of metal and you don't want that in your skin so just kind of give it a once over to get like the heavy stuff off and then that's when you want to grab uh, some diesel fuel which should be easy to come by since the tractor runs on diesel so i happen to have a handy dandy can here it does usually have a tube on the top but we're not gonna do that so just a little diesel fuel kind of give it that shaker loose yeah see most of it just is good uh, i did notice you know nothing to freak out about up here at the top they must you know spray the whole thing black when they're done so there was some paint it, it looks like metal chipping but it's just the paint so also to be mindful of that when you're you know breaking the seal on this thing for the first time to uh not freak out so but yeah be, like i said you want to be very gentle with this filter it's 50 bucks to replace it it's the most expensive piece of this process uh, and yeah, so you don't want to do that if you don't have to because the first time or two with these as long as you're careful with it And you can get it, you know, super duper clean and nice Then you're good to go. So yeah, see look at that Good deal So yeah, no more gunk. No more build up on there It's all clean of debris and everything. Like I said, make sure this little gasket stays on there. That's how you make a seal. I mean, most of you guys already know that, but it's so easy to forget it and you just screw it on there because it fell off in the drip pan or something like that. And then all of a sudden you're working and you're like, why am I losing pressure? Why is this not happening? Because you've been slowly leaking your fluid everywhere. And uh, yeah, then you burn up your tractor and all your stuff and you're screwed and you got to start from scratch with a lot of problems. So let's not do that. But there it is. Be gentle with it. And uh, usually the braking comes from, you know, either trying to crack it loose to get it out or tighten it too tight to get it back in. Don't do that. Just hand tighten it till it goes. And like I said, 23 millimeter wrench, just put it on there and just enough to make it snug. And you know, when you're going, you can check it. If it's not dripping, then you're good to go. Let it run for a little while when you're working and then check it again when you park it. And if you got no drip spills, then you're good. It's still running a little bit, but like I said, we got to do the other side. So it'll get the most out of that. So just kind of, just nice and easy, get it to where it's there and tighten it on real simple and i know this seems like overkill that i'm stressing this but i promise you everybody i know that uses these everybody i know that's made videos the same as i'm doing right now they, we all say the same thing be gentle as you can see it's not the easiest to get it seated in here don't let yourself get frustrated and you know cross thread it or screw it up be gentle, be easy, hand tighten it all the way around. Now keep in mind, it's gonna be a little slippery from, you know, some of the hydraulic fluid. 23 millimeter wrench. Have patience with this stuff, guys. I know that's a dirty word when you're working on machines and cars, but there it goes. I think it's nice and tight, all right. Uh, I'm gonna leave the tire off till we get it done because there's still some more things to do. Uh, still got to do the filter for that, like the main trans hydraulic filter, which everyone says it's a pain to get to and all that. So I bought a special uh, clampy wrench, which I hope is will be better and easier to do than a normal uh, oil filter wrench because it's basically this, it looks the same as an oil filter for a car. Um, so we'll see if that gets in there. Otherwise, you got to undo some hoses and stuff. But we'll get to that. And then we still got to do the drain for the front axle and the regular oil. But onward we go to the other side. All right, same thing. Take the tire off. Uh, one thing I like about the RK deal is similar to like the, the greasing points that they have all over the tractor for like your joints and stuff. There's a lot of spots. If it needs to move or be removed to work on, they paint it yellow. This is your drain plug for this side. Like I said, there's, there's no filter on this side, so it's just a plug like that. Um, one thing most people miss, if you come down, there is one in the middle right there. Um, 
which I've noticed that, you know, this is straight off the manufacturer, but there is uh, doesn't seem to be tightened down all the way. So I'll have to check and see if that's just how it's seated and it's, it's like a shoulder bolt or something, but that comes out and that comes out, finish the draining for the hydraulics. So we're gonna get going on that. Yeah, that's my hand down in the, uh, in the hydraulic fluid tub as it's draining because uh, I used I used my air wrench to get the side bolt off because it was giving me fits and uh, that's why when it came off the bolt it was a very short short shallow bolt that came out of that spot right there like I showed you that's it laying right there uh, and when it did I happened to notice I saw a splash in the oil pan but then I saw the bolt rolling around on the ground next to the jack stand, which tells me, huh, where's that washer? Where's that gasket that's gonna keep that seal? Cause I didn't see it. So yeah, I'm elbow deep in hydraulic fluid, but you have to have it. Cause without that little thing, this whole tractor becomes worthless real quick. Remember, keep an eye on your stuff. Okay, so we're done with the drain uh, back there. I got it, it's still sitting on the tractor, but it, yeah, it's all put in, bolts back in, hand tighten, and then crank down just to be secure. Don't overdo it, you don't want to snap it off. Uh, then, like I said, got this tire back on. This is the uh, left side of the tractor, driver's side, if you will. Um, just because we're done over here with all this stuff, so you can go ahead and put it back on. Um, but like I said, yeah, it just it's resting on the axle there. So once you get it up, you just kind of get it set, and it'll, hold, it'll sit there, so be careful. But one thing I've noticed is, you see these little burrs? That's just from you know scraping the little bit on the rim when taking these bolts off with the with the air wrench there. So be careful, be mindful of that. One, it sucks to get cut by things like that, and two, it, you know it is damaged, so you want to watch it. Um, but the other thing is, you can see I don't have the holes lined up, even though the tire's sitting there. It's you know it's flat against the axle plate. Um, so that's one thing. I know the whole tractor's up off the ground, but it's that's why I keep the e-brake on, the little red lever there. That's why it's engaged. That way, once I do this kind of hard to see because I don't want to knock it off there but you can just slide it since the e-brakes on the tires the, the actual uh, axle implement isn't going to turn and you can just slide the tire around till your bolts are going to line up and your holes go make it simple but yeah then just you know one at a time get them in there hand tighten them go all the way around and then once you're done tighten them for real with a wrench and you're good to go Okay, everybody's least favorite part of this job. One, being completely underneath a suspended vehicle, which is terrifying for me. Two, let's spin this camera around and we'll show you. Hydraulic. Okay, um, normally they're blue, but since this one's from the factory, I'm probably sure they just went with a generic one. But here, like I said, is the filter. It looks like an oil filter. Incredibly hard to get to. Um, easiest way to do it, if you can be careful, this right here, this hydraulic hose can come off. Since, you know, you're drained and everything, you shouldn't have much coming out of there, if any. Good little pair of channel locks, loosen her up, take it off there, then you can fit either an oil wrench or a large, you know, thin clamp wrench, something like that. And just, this is where the patience comes in. Little bitty turns until it comes off, little bitty turns until it comes on. So let's get this out of here, out, shall we? Sorry, had to put the phone down for a minute. I almost bobbled it into the hydraulic fluid and though it washes off my hand, I doubt throwing a phone in a bag of rice after swimming in a tank of hydraulic fluid would do the trick. But yeah, just simple channel locks, get it in there, loosen it up, grab your drip pan just in case, give yourself some room also just in case, and then just hand loosen it like so takes forever because the bolts on here are forever long anybody got you know jeopardy music or anything like that to play during this there we go and see there there is some drainage out of the hose too so just watch yourself now we can get over here to the filter let me uh grab my wrench with my chandy dandy extendo foot uh, to get in there maybe not probably gonna have to go grab the oil wrench to do this uh i'll get back to you there you go so just kind of grab 
grab a hold and gently, as you know, manly, gently, whatever. Just like that. And like I said, this is where the patience comes. Baby turns. So I'll get back to you in you know, the next like you know five to six hours when I'm done. Okay, I'm back a little sooner than I said. Everything's fine. Uh, one thing I noticed, once I broke the seal on the filter, there must have been some pressure and fluid released from it because this sucker started draining pretty quick. Uh, I didn't get my phone up in time, but yeah, it was a pretty steady flow for a minute there, uh, which was a little bit of a surprise, but I guess I should have thought of that. But yeah, so after several turns with the wrench, now I can just hand it. See, yeah, there it goes. It's taken off. So the filter's just draining. But you can just get in there with it and free spin it. And then uh, once I get it out of here, I'll come back when I get the new one. Okay, still waiting. Um, I got it free. Like I said, just, you know, taking the time with my hand. But, yep, this thing, you know, just like a car, it's going to be full of hydraulic fluid in this case instead of oil like a car. Uh, but it starts to drain. It drains out of here and when the pressure is coming off. And then this thing is just running. So have your drip pan wherever you need it to comfortably do the work and get it done but you know i got it free it's not attached it's just sitting in there at an angle so it can kind of run out so i'm just playing the waiting game with the fluids until i fight with it some more all right i said i keep gonna come back when i get the new filter but i see I keep finding all these little tricks that no one told me to make it easier and i'd like to share so obviously that's the side of the filter that's gonna connect to the tractor up in there this is how you get it out of this tiny, tiny, tiny freaking little space. Wiggle it around and yeah, it's it's gonna have a lot more fluid in it than you expect because every little bit of turn, it starts pouring more out. But wiggle it around because it's a tight squeeze, but eventually you get it into like, you can wiggle it, push it up into the dead space that's up in there until you get it into this position and then you can slide it out. Otherwise, you're going to be trying to take more stuff apart than you need to and yeah don't do it so there's that set it off the side again there's a gasket on there don't double up hold on to it just in case there's some sort of weird you know packaging shipping defect on the new one that you get and uh hold on to it in case you need it otherwise the new one should come with one but set it right there set it on top of your filter you don't want it rolling around in the dirt because then that's just more dirt and grime that gets into the engine. Just like that, like it just falls because I bump stuff. Don't do what I did, kids. Okay, like I said, here's your new one. Got it from Royal King. Oh, I uh, forgot to mention this earlier. Um, but, you know, I had some issues finding all the parts. And before, as I go along, when I start refilling, you know, I've got all my fluids and stuff laid out with all that over there. Uh, I'll tell you exactly what fluids you need because no one else has said that. But... I know when you buy these things, Royal King gives you, you know, like this is the stuff you change or work on when you do your maintenance, but it doesn't actually tell you like a SKU number or a size or a, a oil weight or any of that stuff. Uh, and it doesn't give you the size or any of that filter. And it's not like you can go like you can with AutoZone with your car and uh, say, hey, I got, you know, a 92 Chevy, whatever. Here's, and they tell you, all right, this is what size you need of that. But what you can do is that any Royal King, uh not the service desk at the front of the store but like back where they sell the chainsaws and have all the brochures for the tractors and the you know four-wheelers and stuff like that go back there get an employee and say hey this is the tractor i have i'm gonna do whatever hour maintenance you're on for us this is the 50 hour for the rk24 and he'll say what do you want and you can say i know i know what i need or whatever i'm gonna do you just tell him can you just print me out the parts list and they'll be able to look in their system and they'll print it out and it'll say exactly what you need for your 50 hour, your 100 hour, whatever. And it'll give you a SKU number and it'll give you a price and, you know, how much of everything. Like if you need quarts of, you know, axle oil, it'll tell you, you know, instead of, you know, this one at this price, buy four, obviously. Or, you know, you need five, you know, five gallons of the trans hydraulic fluid, stuff like that. But it also will go through, um, but the, uh, go through the list and it'll tell you what you can get and you can just either walk around the store or drag the associate with you make them put it in your cart but uh, the filters and stuff are at that same counter where they can print out your stuff your list for you uh, and yeah so they'll grab all that but here's uh here's the hydraulic filter like i said it's blue uh good thing to do uh just so you know and in case you ever need a warranty so other people could see it if you know one keep your receipts it's like hey i bought all this stuff so obviously i'm working on it but two 
when you change it, grab a Sharpie, put the date and put the hour that you did it. Like, you know, 50 hour done, you know, for me, it's, you know, the end of March. So that's, there we go. Okay, back under here, like I said, date, service, all that good stuff. Uh, that black ring is obviously the seal gasket like off the old one. Uh, unlike a car, you don't wanna, you know, some people like to charge the filters and put some fluid in them and stuff. I don't suggest doing that because of how you have to get this thing in and out. All you're gonna do is waste the fluid because like I said, you have to put it in and the reverse you got it out, which means it's gonna go in in this position. So obviously everything's just gonna run out. So there's the, there's all that, the threads and all that. Here we go. Find the spot and just squeeze her in there. Easier said than done, obviously, but can be done. <laughs> right like so. And then you just kind of do the wiggle game. Get it up there. Again, gently. And just get it started. Once you get it on there, make sure you're not cross-threading it. Feels like it's going on smooth. Not crooked. Just have the patience and do the work. When you're done with this, once you get it as tight as you can hand-wise, grab the oil wrench, put it on there, and then obviously take your hydraulic hose, get her back on there hand tight, and then you know, with some channel locks, finish the job. And then you're done for this part. So even getting the oil wrench in there again is a pain. Uh, this cable causes a lot of issues. So you just gotta be able to, as soon as you can get it to grip a little bit, work on it. It'll pop off a couple times as the as the filter slides in there. But eventually, you know, little by little, like I said, patience is the key with this part and it, you'll have no problems if you can go slow. Eventually it pops into place and then it's just simple little turns like that. You know, eighth, sixteenth of a turn at a time until it gets nice and snug. Ta-da. That's it. And then there we go. Now, I know you're only seeing the tiny bit here, but I've been doing this for about five, six minutes. Okay, that's on there. Then comes the fun part. Fight this stupid thing out of here. Wiggle, 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 don't tear up the cable. And the easiest way to not do that, situate the wrench to where you can get it up out of there, maybe do that to give yourself a little room. But fight with it getting out of that space. I think I hooked something. I did. Look at that. Ah, there we go. Okay. That's on there. Push that little cable in there. Make sure it's in there. Get your hose. Line it back up. Always be careful not to cross thread anything. The easiest way to tell that sometimes is just reverse. Obviously you're not going to thread anything but you'll feel it click and move around until it seats. Then just hand tighten it, and then when it's on there nice and snug, grab the channel locks, finish the job. Done deal. All right, front end, front axle. Oil needs to be changed in that gear oil and all that. There are three points. As you can see, that yellow dot right there, that's one. This side, right side's two. One in the middle, right there, drain plug. Just square bolts, grab some channel locks, bust them loose. Um, one at a time, do that, let it drain. I'm not sure how long it's gonna take. It should take more than a couple minutes. And then obviously we'll snug them back up, fill her back up. So here we go. Full transparency, I went to my dad's shop because he has all the fancier tools than I do right now, but uh, we won't tell him I just dropped his adjustable rinse in a bucket of hydraulic fluid. We got it loose. Like I said, be gentle as it comes out of there. Be easy. Before you take it all the way out, make sure you're good to go. I don't feel, whoops any uh what is that there's something in there cause oh it's draining from both sides but yeah there's the bolt i don't feel a washer 
or gasket on that. Oh, yep, it's in there. It's just seated real close, but it's there. But yeah, make sure you clean it off real good, get all that gunk, and then let it drain. Once that stops running, then we'll do the edges. Okay, well, well Dad's home, so remember what we said. We're not gonna tell him we dropped this in the hydraulic fluid. Uh, all right, but yep, yeah, so we got the plug back in there. That's the main center drain on the front axle. Uh, doesn't, to me, doesn't matter which side you start on. I just happen to be on this side of the tractor. So I'm gonna undo this bolt here. Uh, it's hard to do with one hand. Clink it on there. Get her going and then that'll drain too. Okay, while the uh, front axle finishes draining back there, I'll go ahead and give you the quick rundown on the uh, different types of fluids you're gonna need to do this job. All right, first, uh, we'll just work back to front. Uh, and just so you know, uh, no, I don't have a preference on brand or anything like that. It's just, you know, I was at Royal King. Everything was grouped together, made it simple. And uh, for me, this was the best price stuff. Um, uh, the best way to do this is a five gallon bucket. This is your trans hydraulic oil fluid, same thing. Um, buy the five gallon bucket, you'll save about five to 10 bucks instead of buying the gallon or two gallon uh, jugs that they sell. Um, yeah, and you know, it's always good to have a little extra on hand because I think, I think it only takes about four and a half gallons, four and three quarters. So a little extra is always good, doesn't hurt, but five gallon bucket, trans hydraulic fluid. There's that, that's for, that runs all your imp implementation, all that, all your pressure, which we'll, uh, we drain that first and then we'll I'll show you when we refill it, how to do all that. But now for the front end, this is gear oil. It's what we're gonna put, that's what we just, you know, we're draining out back there. So SAE 80 weight 90 gear oil. You need four to five quarts of that. So we got one here, the rest of them are laying on the ground over there, four to five quarts of that. And that is your front axle gear oil. Keep that thing running smooth. And then we can just, when you do the engine oil, um, one thing to remember, diesel engine oil. Diesel engine oil. Diesel engine oil. Because it is a diesel engine. It's not normal, it's not the same as a car. Process is the same as far as, you know, you drain it, change the filter, put more in. Um, Make sure you get the ones that say diesel engine oil operates, you know, a little differently because it's a diesel engine. Won't won't work with uh, normal engine oil as you think it should. But there you go. That's the fluid you're gonna need in the right weights and the right amounts. Like I said, five gallon bucket, four to five quarts of this, which I couldn't find uh, any bigger quantity than just the individual quarts. I asked, and the kid at the register was very confused, so I let him have an easy day and said, never mind. And then. Uh, one gallon because it's four again four to five quarts on the engine oil and that'll do it uh another thing just keep in mind not so much on the big bucket because like i said you should have some left over when you're done but i bought an extra one of those an extra quart of the front axle oil and an extra gallon of the engine oil and as you can see i haven't just tossed this is my original trans hydraulic fluid that filter that took forever that now it's blue i kept it in the gasket and I'll keep an extra gallon of this, an extra quarter of that off the side, because you know me, man, I like to be prepared for anything. You never know, especially in today's day and age, you go to a store and you might not be able to get something that you need when you need it. So it's good to have extras. And like I said, this the 50 hour maintenance on this tractor, it's less about, you know, it worn down and more about you broke it in, you know, let it, you know, heat up, get cold a few hundred times while you're, you know, working with it first little bit while you have it. And uh, it's good to have extra stuff. So like I said, you know, buy an extra quart, an extra gallon, get the full bucket because it's, you know, it's good to have extra and it's, you know, it's easier that way instead of hauling a bunch of little ones around trying to pour it all together. And then, you know, especially on your first service here, keep, keep that filter, keep your engine filter just to have it because you never know what uh, you're going to need and not be able to get and just set off side. And if anything else, you know, when you go to change it later, then you can pitch it or if you have to do an un unforeseen maintenance in case you know god forbid something does start happening funky you think oh, okay i'll i'll do some service and check it out uh you might not have the time if you're in the middle of the day in the middle of the field or a project and you gotta get something done you might not have time to run all the way down to a rural king or a parts store or wherever to get it so it's good to have on hand so finished draining got the drain plug back in that's all good got the drains plugged back in all good 
we'll wait to refill it but that is where we're gonna refill it at and it's got a, it's its own dipstick and everything it's easy since we're still underneath the, the tractor here we got that right there is the drain plug for the engine oil now it's on there pretty snug 17 millimeter wrench hard to do unless you got a really long wrench or you can hillbilly power style it like that break it loose simple as that take it off there get it out the way not in the pan same as always give yourself some room to work oil pan in place and like everything else once you broke loose see it's already draining one make sure the pan's actually over it but more importantly when you are unscrewing it finger tight it's gonna shoot out a little bit make sure you're not losing any gaskets i don't believe the, the i was wrong that was just paint or some uh maybe some plumber's tape type stuff but there was no gasket there and where's the bolt yep drains real nice just like that comes out in your hand there you go oh again i think it's just yep yeah no gasket there either just heats on there okay well we let her drain uh give me a minute to clean this bolt you know just like the filter i showed earlier get you some rags diesel fuel douse this stuff wipe it down so it's nice clean make sure there's no part particulates or anything's hanging out on there and then uh set it off in a nice clean dry spot until it's done draining there he goes thought i was standing up to play with him there's captain hank more obedience training my dad's helping out my dad is the animal whisperer not just dogs but he specializes in that and i'm glad because hank has definitely needed a refresher course now that he's got a little more room to run without the fence okay okay so engine oil engine oil is finishing draining filter you ask okay pull this lever down here on the side of this right side of the engine where is the release there you go jerk that down get your hood up oh look at that self-locking hood that's amazing now this is how you do it it's actually pretty simple it looks tight but it's simple these two bolts you're gonna unscrew them okay skip the part where you watch me unscrewing bolts for five minutes two bolts set them there this that's it this is your front end it'll lift right off but you want to be careful down here the wiring harness so just kind of scoot it over unclick it and then it'll come free from everything because you don't want to rip your headlights and stuff loose so please hold okay so i've learned it's easier to get to that thing the wiring harness for your headlights from the left side of the tractor but once you get that pop loose it's simple it's just a little pressure plate that whole thing front end headlights lifts off you can just set it down to the side there front end of the tractor is exposed Give it a good once over you got some overflow here your your batteries down there um this is a nifty feature that we've noticed is this is you know the gasket that kind of holds everything in place it just undoes there simple one this is your air filter you just kind of rock it loose ah, there goes the bolt don't do that you want to keep that so your airflow pull that off there get it out of the way and then your screen comes out. Ew, bugs and dirty stuff. Blow that out, give it some compressed air, wipe it off, put it back in. Sorry, cut myself off there. But yeah, so like I said, just set off the screen, set it out of the way once you get it clean, kind of look it over, you can blow all that out, get, it's kind of hard to see, but the gunk and debris out of the way. We'll reverse it all back together. Uh, your air filter is in here, but like I said, it's hard to get to, so once those side panel the the front end there is off i got my tire in the way so it's kind of hard to see but this stuff is really simple there's just these little clips here they are where's my hand there we go right there there's just posts and these little clips give it a give it a good little yank they're gonna pop loose and then i dropped it but there's that seating bolt you just slide it out the whole thing lifts out of the way they make it pretty simple to work on that part of the tractor same with both sides but it's good to go again check it all out fuel filter all that sort of good jazz 
your oil filter. Here's your dipstick and your refill spot. And then right there, or there's your dipstick, but there's your refill. Sorry, I'm looking with my eyes and you guys can't see. All right, once you get the side panel off, you can get your air filters, just two little clips. Take that off there. There you go. Set that out of the way. Kind of just give it a little wiggle. She works her way out. Same thing. Still mostly clean, but you can hit it with some compressed air. The uh, uh, air compressor. Blow that. Blow that out. We'll reverse all this back together. But down here on the side, here's your refill for your oil. Your dipstick. Uh, dipstick here and. I need to stop dropping stuff today. Oil filter, so we'll change all that and get her going. More fun information. You cannot really get an oil wrench onto that thing because of the frame and all this other stuff. So first thing you wanna do, take the dipstick out, get it out of your way so you don't snap it off because that thing is flimsy thin. Yeah. Next, fight with a little more, realize you can't get it, you know, an oil, normal oil wrench onto it so then you try this handy dandy you know grabber thingy that i bought because it looked cool and thought maybe it'd be easy but so far you have failed me more so than tony stark's robot so i went back to the oldie but goodie long long channel locks just to get it to clamp down and bust loose and lo and behold it turns so there you go that's how you break it loose make it simple once it gets going just hand crank it now that she's loose again, don't forget to put the oil pan back under there because it's gonna run out of that. And then these hoses are kind of wedged down in this space, pull them out of the way so you don't just get them filthy dirty. And then, you know, back it off, tilt it down. It's gonna run all out into the oil pan. Just let it drain for a minute. Once it starts doing that, you can give it the old heave ho right out of there again. Make sure your gasket's on it. Let her drip, drip, drip in the real. And then if you're like me, like I said, I'm gonna hold on to that. Just in case, you never know in this crazy world. Like I said, 50 hours on something like this, everything's coming out looking really clean and nice because you know it, it's obviously it's brand new for the most part. Uh, so those things aren't really worn down or busted up or anything like that. So. I'd hold on to them uh, just a half, you know, in case of emergency. But there you go. All right. So same uh, same drill. Got the new oil filter here in the box. I'm gonna go ahead and get that out of there. This uh, comes in white. Same thing. I'm gonna date it and hour it. That way it's marked. Uh, there's plastic there. Don't fight with it and get frustrated. Just from a little piece of plastic being your way. But yeah, it's sealed, keeps the you know, gunk out of it. Throw the uh, your gasket still in there too. So just pop that off. Uh, probably a good idea, put some oil down in this. You know, it is an oil filter. And since you can just on and off it real quick like a normal car, uh, good to have so it's you know pre-charged. And you can just slap it on there real quick. Okay, obviously it's a little hard to do one hand with the camera. So got some oil in there. Just, you know, slow pour until it, you know, Looks like it's gonna overflow and then stop. That's plenty, it'll bubble and drain all the way down in there, get through all the seals. Rub it all around the top, make sure it's nice and lubed up. Keep your stuff out of the way, here we go. So there's that. Get her into place as quick as possible because every little bit on its side is gonna drip and drain. And there goes Mr. Hank seeing the neighbor's horse. They're buddies, but his bark is definitely much louder than his bike. Thanks, sir. Okay, so yeah, once you get that on there, again, I'll use the channel locks, get that thing going, tighten down. Uh, also, like I said, in case anyone else forgot, I didn't this time, but I have in the past, make sure your drain bolt is back in there, like everything else. So the next step is, you know, like I said, I'll finish tightening that down, and then uh, go and give it a once over, make sure every plug and bolt and everything is back in place because otherwise you don't want to think oh i filled it up and now i've got a leak because it keeps not staying full and there's something dumb like that i'm sure okay so we're gonna do a once over got the oil filter tightened up 
oil plug is in and tight. Axle bolt one left, axle bolt two right, axle bolt three center, all in place. I'm gonna go around the tractor real quick to the left side. I already got the wheel on, so we know, but remember there was that one drain bolt there and one into the center, those are tight. Tires on tight, I, we buttoned all that up earlier. So this side's good as far as that goes. Now, still got the right rear tire off. Uh, two reasons, one, you wanna make sure that, you know, this is still good, nothing's changed. So that's on tight, that's the hydraulic, the hydraulic filter, hydrostatic filters up underneath, that's tight, we did that earlier. So yeah, we're gonna do So, got most of the uh, gallon of oil in the car or tractor. Um, yeah, that was fun. Uh, before you check it, you wanna give it a minute, let it drain down through the engine. That way it can actually seep in there. You can get a good read on it. Uh, you know, I put in most of the gallon. I'm down to maybe a quart, uh, but we'll see. If we need to add more, we add more. But uh, be mindful when you are pouring the oil in there. It's uh, very thin, runs kind of like water, so. Not like a car where it takes a few minutes to pour out, it'll, it'll go. So don't, don't make a mess. But yeah, so we'll check the oil. If it's a little low, we can add more. If not, then we're good and we can move on. Ah, don't fall. Okay. So here's the dipstick. Got a couple of, there's some showing up on there. Where's the reed on it? I guess it's just between those two giant marks. That's a lot of difference there. Yeah, I'm not really sure about that. I guess that's how, huh. If that's your low and that's your high, that's a pretty big uh, pretty big difference. A lot of leeway there, but yeah. It's kind of hard to see in this light, but yeah, I need to add a little bit more as it's barely getting to the end of the dipstick. Uh, front end axle, like I said, it's the uh, 80 weight, 90 gear oil. I went ahead and opened three of these, save time, but the way you do that is you unscrew the cap and there's a little seal in there. Pretty simple, you know, just in case this is a teenager watching his first video. All you gotta do, give it a little like that, put the cap back on. Take the safety cover off and then they come sealed. So just do that, there you go. Hey, I'm teaching people how to do this. Dad says hi, by the way. All right, so here we go. This is where you put the gear oil into the front end axle. Just take that off. This uh, cap isn't just the cap, it's also the dipstick. Make sure you don't lose the gasket like everything else. I can't stress it enough. If you can tell, I've done it a time or two in my life. Just get her close, and we go. Starts to run out, give her a tip. Says uh, three to four of these, so we'll go three and i'll uh, catch you guys back up when i'm done with all that okay so we got it in there had a little spillage but just anything kind of look it over you can see it's you know it's hard to tell again but i'm just tripping off the end but you can tell there's fluid in between the the ridges there which is your you know low to full so we're good to go all right so that's all good filled up nice and tight cap back on like i said you want to blow some air through all this, clean off your uh, your vents and all that. So it's kind of hard to get in here with one hand, so bear with me. Doing my best. I'm also left-handed, so this is complicated for, you know, other people. Okay, buttoning up the front end. Like I said, slide that in first. There's another one about halfway down. It's hard to see, but it's there. Those will kind of fit in, and then your side piece will clip onto its clips just as it should. Pretty simple, just give it a little tap. Come over here, I've already said it on there, but you know, get your front end situated, make sure it's all lined up as it should. Before you screw that down and get too crazy, don't forget, like everyone does, reach down in there. Sorry about the shake. That. 
reconnects to that. Otherwise, you won't have headlights or a lot of things. So let me snap that back together real quick. Okay, yep, yeah, just slides in together. You'll hear it click. There's only one right way to do it, but get it on there and then kind of tuck it back down as it should be. Kind of do this jostle. And once you do, it'll go back into its riding line. This obviously is underneath. This obviously is underneath. These little pins kind of slide is what I was talking about, but not showing because I'm bad at camera work by myself with one hand. Okay, everything looks good on the front. Simple enough, except look at that. Only got one bolt sitting up here, which means the other one is down there. Be back in a minute. Okay, I'm glad I lost my other bolt. I found it, thank God. But it made me really take everything off, took the other side panel off. While I was doing that, found out that cubby, here's your battery, that cubby is pretty deep in there. And I did, I had a whole little mouse house going on in there. They're not there, obviously, because the tractor's been up and running and stuff now, but very nice. Saved myself possible future issues, but got the bolt. So I'll slap this whole thing back together and then we're gonna get to filling up hydraulics and then we'll be done. Okay, last part. Hydraulic fluid into the system. So on the back of the tractor back here, there's usually this cap we already got taken off. Goes right there. Five gallon bucket, I highly suggest you invest in one of these handy dandy pumps. Uh, I picked this up at Tractor Supply, had the whole thing for the top of the bucket, all that put together a couple seconds it's like 55 bucks but good investment because this ain't the only time we're going to be doing it so that goes in there now there's a little window under this thing we'll get to but we'll get started and then it's just crank away there goes the fluid all the way in i'll catch you up in a minute Okay, crawling under the back end of this thing, like I'm right underneath the backhoe. You look up in there, we got a light on it, but that, can't get my hand in there. That right there ain't a bolt. That's the uh, gauge. So far, no fluid in it, but it'll fill up most of the way. Once that is, you want to stop what you're doing, close the, the intake, Turn this sucker on, raise and move around all your parts, the backhoe, the front loader, all that stuff, or let it get going up and down a bunch, and then come back to check again because you'll have to add more. But this is where we do it. Yep. Still going. Better than pouring it in though, trying to juggle a five gallon bucket. Uh, fun fact, if you look through there, it's kind of hard to figure it out with just this camera, but there is a, a gap through all that that allows you to see the uh, the check window for all the fluid once you get there. But I'm probably a couple gallons in, a couple more to go. Still going. All right. So as you can see, there's a little line going across the bubble there. Now that means it's half, when that gets to half, you wanna stop and then that's when you turn the tractor on, fire it up, lift up the loader, move it all around, work it, work the arms and everything on the back hill, all that, let it run, charge up all the hydraulics, come back down, check it. It, it should drop, or it might not, but it should drop. And uh, then you pump it back to where it's back to half and then you're good to go. Okay, so we got it running. We're gonna, Work out the kinks a little bit, make sure there's no air in the lines, anything like that. Real low. There we go. Same thing, drop her down. Good deal. Same here on the back. Out, left, right, center it up, extend, open bucket, close bucket, curler under, and 
and then don't hit yourself down tight up and down on there don't crush your feet either Oop. don't tip the tractor over on yourself all good in the hood yep there we go so just like that so that's it that's the whole thing don't forget to clean everything up put it all away but she's good um just to show you what i meant so so there you can see it's kind of hard because the glare but you can see the little line rising as we're doing our backfill here or our, well you know top it off but you gotta get it to ah stupid glare but yeah about halfway to three quarter and that's that there you go. Got her all topped off here. Sorry, I had it zoomed in. You just take your little hose out of there if you got one. Keep her out of the way on the bucket. Grab your cap. Ah, don't drop it in the dirt. <laughs> Sorry about that. So yeah, get your uh, fill hose out of there. Get your cap, make sure it's nice and clean. And then just tighten her down. So that's all the hard stuff with all the fluids and filters and all that. Uh, one thing you want to always remember to do, grease gun with, you know, grease situated for these kind of machines. Just walk around anywhere there's like joints, like elbows and wrists or anything. Find your little grease points, pump them full till you see it coming out. It's real simple, just a couple pumps on the grease gun. There are a ton of these. They're all over this thing everywhere there 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 up and down the front on all these elbows too but on these ones on the front on the loader they're actually on the sorry they're on the side there instead of on the actual like elbow piece but they're there take your time go through make sure you grease it up good that way everything keeps running smoothly so that's that rk24 50 hour service uh like i said engine oil and filters changed front axle gear oil changed hydraulic fluid system hydrostatic filters changed checked air filtered everything looked over looks good blown out cleaned up and that's your 50 hour service um took about four hours for me to do that but this was the first time i've done it with this tractor and uh also you know while making a video so that takes some of the time too and you know getting tools and everything situated and getting it where you need it to be to do the work but realistically if i was just focused on just the work especially now that i've done it and see how it is hour to two hours max um but you know it's been a day out out in the yard just enjoying the weather get it done it's good stuff it's a good little tractor we take care of it it takes care of us it's good stuff get the work done even when it gets dark why is that because that's what heroes do